Welcome everybody to the e-commerce rockstar show. We are here to interview seven figure plus e-commerce entrepreneurs that are doing some really rad things, building great brands, pull out some actionable advice, tips, tricks, strategies, and most importantly, some mindsets on how to get to the next level and building a wicked brand. I'm really excited for this this whole setup today because I'm actually at the Making Bank studio, yes. if you will, at Trapping Conversion with my good friend Josh Felber. I've been on your show, so it's for sure, really man. cool to have yeah. you on the first yeah. episodes of mine. Um, I've known Josh mostly through the internet for a couple yep. of years now. It's yeah. cool to meet you in the flesh and finally hang out. Been a lot of friends like that, I feel like. That's, yeah, today. same way, definitely. Meet people in the industry. Um, but, dude, I'm, I'm really excited to get into chatting with you because I know you've done a lot of really cool things in e-commerce. Like, you're one of the... OGs of like <laughs> selling your products online and combining that with retail and yeah. you know, you've helped a lot of other companies, consulted for a lot of other companies. You've got a great show making bank, Thank you. which I absolutely love. Appreciate it. Um, so <clears throat> dude, you're a rock star. I would love to hear <laughs> a little bit more about your origins in e-commerce and what brought you to for sure. now, Primal Life Organics, because you guys are doing some really cool things I want to talk about. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll give a quick 30 second like backstory and then kind of where we first start where I first started my e-com origins. Um, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur since I'd say 14 was my real business when I uh, started the first Commodore Amiga retail computer dealership in my nice. area and everything. And, nice. um, you know, I'm 46, so if you're kind of familiar and around that same block, you'll know Commodore Amiga computers and all that Definitely, good stuff. Yeah. I'm a little bit after that. After that, but you still, know, yeah. okay. my older cousins. Were, yeah. <laughs> that was like the legit yeah. machine back then. Yeah. So, um, but fast forward, uh, kind of my first e-com origins was uh, initially, um, I, I used to be in the merchant services business and after I had sold my company and everything, um, I came back to Ohio and started working for a friend and uh, we built out the first uh, internet merchant gateway website purchasing solutions and everything and um, authorized that was the only thing around. It had a lot of security issues and a friend of mine had started another company called Skipjack Merchant Services, which was the true secure gateway at that time. And so we started grabbing their code and uh, plugging it into hard-coded websites that nobody really knew what websites were back in 99-ish. You know, so like only maybe like 0.05% of the businesses, if that, had them. Right. This is interesting, too, because I mean, like, when we started Beer Club, like, like four years ago, right. four and a half years ago, mm -hmm. We thought it was hard then for like the platforms are out because there weren't like you know dynamic subscription things at sure. the time. Like they were just sort of figuring that out. Yep. We're talking about like you know way before that where things were. If you Even wanted something, you had to build it yourself. Build it hard. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't cheap either. I mean, we had we ended up building out like the team to. It was mostly developers. Yeah. Like developers, the code, the websites, everything else. And say it was sales and developers. Yeah. Those are the two pieces. Yeah. You needed a, to be a tech company to do e <laughs> Pretty much back then. So uh, that was kind of the first gateway into it. Um, and then a few years later, I owned another company, um, part of another company uh, called Slim Mints. Uh, we ended up getting into like 45,000 retail stores across the world, um, yeah. but all the major ones here in the U.S. And uh, we started initially by putting a PayPal button and letting people buy right off the just a website that we built out. Uh, some website built or builder or whatever. I think at that time it was around 2003 ish or so, mm -hmm. um, and had that until we sold that company. And then um, did some stuff later on uh, with like when ClickFunnels first launched in 2014. I was one of the original ClickFunnels uh, users. Um, not it's not like it was now it's all mm -hmm. sweet and smooth and beautiful and it was all funky and chunky back then you but help, you great job them guys <laughs> you know, maybe i don't know <laughs> um and you know my wife my wife um when our daughter was born uh we couldn't find natural baby care products they the so-called natural were not really natural mm -hmm. and her being a nurse and a nurse anesthetist and everything like hey you know i'll figure this and she started making baby care products like lotions and sprays for the butt and all that stuff and everything and um, me being the entrepreneur was like oh hey let's just build a little website and put it up there and start selling it and yeah. so we did it was under a different company name called uh, Olives Organics and we sold a thousand maybe two thousand bucks a month for um, this was let's see uh, 2008 still sort of like a hobby passion still that yeah that's all it was yeah. I mean I owned some CrossFit gyms at that time and she was a full-time um, doing anesthesia putting people to sleep and all that in the hospitals and um, then in, uh, 2011, uh, um, we became, um, paleo focused. So eating paleo and health yeah. paleo. She's like, I wonder if there's any paleo skincare and she would Google and nothing except for like people talking about using uh, coconut oil or something. 
And I was like, oh, let's look at the search traffic. And so I happened to look at that and I was like, oh, it's going trending up. And so she's like, and we kind of talked and like, hey, let's rebrand. And so we rebranded in 2012, January 2012 under Primal Life Organics and took the same products because and just switched all the branding and it just went whoosh mm -hmm. and took off. And um, we ran it. Um, she made the products right from our kitchen. I mean, we started with like 500 bucks and um, built it all, you know, built out the Shopify store because we were on like a WooCommerce platform and Shopify just started to get some traction then. And, um, built on Shopify and I told her once it hit a couple million bucks I would come on board and you know yeah. several years later it did and um, sold off and got rid of or closed down some of the other businesses that I owned at that time and came on full-time to run from um, I run all of our e-commerce and uh, digital marketing strategies and things like that now so that's cool man I love how it just <laughs> started with this like passion sort of side project and saw the opportunity pivoted towards it yeah and built a brand around it. I mean, kind of like, you know, I mean, with you guys in Dollar Beer Club and or Beer Club and all that stuff now. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah. We had sort of like an interesting journey too, where we were really excited about what we were building. We love making these videos. We didn't really have like a deeper purpose for it. Right. So we started seeing like the reaction our customers had. They're like, you know, more products makes me feel more comfortable. <laughs> you know, I can talk to bearded guys easier now. We connect right away. Yep. Your videos. That's why we're connected. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we, we connected with this deeper purpose, like kind of after the fact. Sure. I think that like, you know, a lot of people get stuck on this idea that they might need to start from day one with this like amazing giant purpose for their business, but everything's part of a process. Right? Right. You learn stuff yeah. from one business that you can take to another or you can pivot your brand. So for uh, sure, it's cool that you guys were able to do that. And, and I mean, you know, all the things that we've done from 2002, I mean, we, I guess the biggest thing too for me is like, you just have to try and test things. I mean, like some weeks Facebook ads are working amazing and other weeks you're like, what the heck? I didn't change anything. It's sucking this week and we're losing money on them. Like, what, what? there's no difference. And, you know, and you just got to like trial and testing. And um, I think one of the biggest things for us was um, she's a creator and, you know, she's the face of the company and she's, we had over 80 SKUs up until August of last uh, 2018. And finally we're like, okay, where, you know, what products are generating the most revenue? Right. And narrow the focus. Narrow the focus. Because, yeah. I mean, we were spending, I don't know, over a million dollars a year in Facebook ad spend or, you know, uh, digital ad spend and stuff like that. Yep. But it was going, like, all over 80 products or right. mostly. And so um, when we took analysis and looked at it, we we're like, well, holy cow, it's like all of the dental product, like all of our tooth powders and dental products and everything were generating it. Uh, some of the, some of the skincare. So we kept a little bit of that and our deodorants. So like our dental and deodorants and a little bit of skincare. So we kept those main products yeah. and then we dialed down. So then we rolled out like our led whitening systems and some of the other complementary products around yeah. dental, um, to then boost all that. So now we've been able to cut back the ad spend, but drive more focused ad spend. Right on you know on our products and everything yeah. so it's interesting when those little i guess like opportunities come up sure where you're like oh wow i'm doing way too much on way too many different areas and we went through similar things we actually found out that some of our products we were selling were just simply too much for like a subscription <laughs> offer we're like right wow we're like we're killing our own subscription base by giving too much product away um it's great to provide that kind of value but at a certain point you have to make business decisions of like hey we're focusing on too many things and some of them are just frankly not helping our business at all. right yeah. Well, it's interesting too. You said, uh, you know, too much in our subscription, and that's one of the things too. Is I mean, our stuff is so concentrated, probably like what you guys have, and it would last not a month. Some people last six months, right? And you're like, wait a minute, they're all like on a every other month, but then all of a sudden they cancel or whatever. And you're like, what happened? Why well, still have too much? Yeah. So us, you know, it's shrinking. Like instead of a one ounce, we go to a half ounce and things like that. Yeah. To continue to build maintain subscriptions so. and is, is that like the main part of your business subscription base so uh, no it's not we've been trying to build it um, you know obviously you guys did very successful Dollar Shave Club you know six very successful with subscription side of things and everything um, and we've tried to build it and for us it's like kind of like that thing it's like okay boom 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 you kind of grow and then five steps back yeah five steps back and part of it is uh, on the Shopify platform all the subscription apps suck <laughs> so we're, we're working with somebody right now to hard code a subscription back end yeah. for us because all the subscription apps on Shopify suck <laughs> well it's I mean like when you have a lot of different products and you have a database that's yeah. a lot of information it's hard to to take like an off-the-shelf situation you know and it, it does it to your business like 
it's just, I mean, when we started three and a half years ago, four years ago, building a site, we looked at the different options and things like, you know, bold and recharge weren't even like, you know, really developed at that point. Yeah, but they're still not great. <laughs> well, it's, it's tough to make that sort of one size fits all I know. solution. Yeah. If you've got one or two products, cool, plug it's it right easy. in, it's easy. But right. if you have like a legacy of data to deal with and you want to run a really robust business, it can be pretty tough. Sure. Um, so you, I guess like, have you had like a decent amount of website issues? This hits home for me. I mean, I've <laughs> yeah. gone through a lot of these struggles too. And uh, yeah. sometimes I think we were just kind of using that as an excuse when we were you know, like, oh, it's our website. That's why we're not doing more. But you know, it can be really pretty significant issues. I mean, we've had like skipped charges and, and double rebills and stuff like that, that have created a lot of customer service issues. And we found what's really been like the, the driving focus for having a really scalable, or sorry, scalable subscription sure. business is like attention to detail and, and that experience okay and making sure that people stick around um and like you said because it like you can have a subscription business but if you're not retaining people you're still just out there like <laughs> you turn you know, it getting yeah, yeah hamster wheel in it it's like yeah. <laughs> um yeah you know and part of it too is um and you know we try to take a look at this all the time you mentioned like website issues and things yeah. like that and it's it's even more challenging now. I think with the way sh uh, Safari keeps changing, like, it, and you have browser issues. Like, mm -hmm. we got screwed. You know, like, it was probably s maybe six eight months ago when Safari like sh screwed all the cookie stuff and yeah. like, and you know, you lost all that. So we had to wait for Google and Facebook to come out with you know a variation of yeah. you know be able to track everything you know for us um, to people buying more on their phone now like more on their phone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're sixty eight. 70% mobile. Yeah, we saw a big shift in our lifetime. Yeah, it's, you know, which we didn't initially. It wasn't yeah. like that. And so now it's like, okay, we just rolled out our new mobile. We had mobile app, but it sucked. It wasn't yeah. that great. Um, our mobile version has always been okay. So, I mean, that was one of the new things is pushing out our newest mobile version. Our mobile apps now yeah. actually operate way better than the website. And it just, it just flows. It's, it's more seamless and the whole checkout and stuff is just way better. And, um, you know, and then it's, driving you know i mean we drive a ton of traffic from facebook and google and things like that as well so yeah. cool i want to switch gears a little bit um running a business with your wife that's got to be <laughs> interesting i mean like you know I, I ran a business partner with one of my good friends and we had sure points of our relationship that were very strenuous um you know what's it like obviously if she's watching this you have to be careful but <laughs> no I um, tell it how it seems is, like but... you guys have a really fantastic relationship she's great on camera but oh yeah which i like i love and she's awesome was, was she always that good or uh, she just sort of develops into develop. a rock star i mean i think it's it's always developing i mean i'm an introvert so like even like with my You're own me <laughs> <laughs> well you have to create and you yeah. know fortunately like todd herman's alter alter ego book is about creating those personalities or those personas and stuff yeah. that make you super and what you do yeah. and so i think i've taught myself naturally over the years you know and for me being on video was like one of the hardest challenges and you know it, but you have to push and challenge yourself and I've, i'm always about challenging and you know i i don't let like i don't have that fear factor in me I've never really had that like oh man this is I'm scared to do this and yeah. it's not limited me so I just kind of push through and always however it comes out on the other side and yeah. you know my sh making bank is 300 plus interviews <laughs> so yeah. it, it doesn't seem like that anymore yeah. but maybe the first couple I always hit did uh, the first 200 <laughs> um, but for her I mean I, I know I mean sh her it's you know, it's the same thing It's developed and, you know, she's always refining and, you know, trying to figure out better ways. And I mean, we do a lot of training and like learning and stuff and, yeah. you know, how we can be better, um, th different things we can say. How do you say, how do you create the best value for the audience that's watching right now and everything or when she goes on camera and stuff. And so, um, wow, man, I think, I think the dynamic's really cool because, you know, she's the face of the brand. She is, same yes. as, you know, yeah. the face of our brand. And I didn't have that skill at the time of speaking to a camera and not being completely <laughs> terrified and whatnot. Um, but there, I think there's a lot of people out there that are looking for that counterpart that can be the face of their brand. Right. You know, um, obviously you found her quite easily, but <laughs> you know, what, what's the dynamic been like? And um, have you guys just been having a blast doing this and developing a really deep relationship on a business level as well as it, you know, it, it is. And I mean, sometimes when we have three kids too, so it's like, that's a whole nother dynamic and, we don't, so we don't always get to personally connect a ton sometimes because yeah. of that. So I think it's good and bad because um, we're always at business, you know, we're working in the business. 
And one of the things for me, I mean, having owned that many businesses over the years, sometimes it's a challenge because it's like, I okay, you know, she has her thoughts and her flow and stuff, and I try to let her kind of take, I mean, she I let her take the lead on everything because yeah. she's running it, she's going through it and stuff. And you know, I'm like, okay, cool, my kind of carve out is kind of the marketing yeah. piece of it. Um, you know, and obviously we talk back and forth on different ideas and she comes to me for different thoughts and things like that. Um, but I try to, and I'll give her my thoughts. And a lot of times, you know, for me, it's like, she'll make a decision. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, maybe that wasn't I one I would have made, but that's what her making the best decision at that point in time is and everything. And, you know, whatever it is, I support with that. Um, they don't always turn out the right, but that's the way you learn. Yeah, just like absolutely. me building 15 different companies. <laughs> well, <laughs> Not all of them have got worked and a lot of them have failed. So <laughs> I, I have the same dynamic. And so, you know, Chris would make a decision and sometimes it wouldn't turn out right. I'm yeah. Like, you know, I made it would have made a different decision. Well, it was pretty pretty easy for me to say it that After time. The fact, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Um, so, I guess to bring it full circle, I love talking about like people that are really high performing entrepreneurs. Dude, you've got this like epic show that I feel like I'm co-hosting right now. Even though it's yeah. fine, but um, you've got this epic show. You've got an amazing business. You've got you know an amazing wife and kids and family life. Um, I love like kind of diving in for the last little bit on like some personal sure. strategies that you yeah. use to be efficient with your time. I appreciate you spending your time with me. I oh yeah, had, like, no, that's awesome. Today, so I appreciate that. <laughs> We're um, winding down. <laughs> what, what's a, what's been uh, really quintessential in, in you being an effective entrepreneur and focusing on the right things and sure. making sure that you're doing well? Uh, for I mean, for me, one of the biggest things I learned when I was younger, um, I read uh, like Unlimited Power, Awaken the Giant book, Tony Robbins books when I yeah. was 13, 14 years old, uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. And for me, it was like applying that kind of re- that became my first real mentoring, I guess you'd say, but applying all, like, I mean, every single day, writing the strategies that tapped everything that Tony would talk about in those books yeah. and just dramatically applying it to my life. So it was just kind of crazy because years later I was just like, man, why are not, why don't other people think like this? Yeah. And for, and I had hired a business coach through Tony Robbins. It was, he's the top business coach at Tony Robbins. Everything's still there. And I was just like, man, he's like, dude, like 98% of the population doesn't think that way because they haven't gone through the same stuff that you've gone through. Yeah. I'm like, okay, got it. Um, but, um, for me, you know, it's, um, relentless and, um, you know, being able to be consistent and just continue to go after. And like Tim Grover talks about in his book, Relentless, and he's trained, he's been the trainer for like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and Dwayne Wade and kind of what he's lackluster clients. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> None of the big guys. <laughs> no, but I mean, like everybody wants to be Jordan. I mean, yeah. even LeBron, he always wanted to be like at that level yeah. that Jordan's at. But there, and in his book, he talks about you kind of have that cooler mindset. You have the guys that follow everybody else, which, okay, you have, you just have to have that. Those are the guys that are on the court and they yep. follow the leader. And then you have the guys that are the closers. So those are like, um, uh, like a LeBron and those kind of things. So they know how to follow the, um, they, they, they run the plays. They, you know, they, they have an idea of how the plays go and how they should flow. But if a kink gets thrown, they get all jammed up and they get in their head. Right. Um, then you have the guys that are the cleaners. Those are like the Jordan those are like Kobe and Dwayne Wade, and that are willing to do whatever it takes, whether it's on season, off season, and they're always performing at that higher level. They don't want to be the guys that are like, okay, how can I be like him? They're right. like, I want to be the guy that everybody is aspiring to be. Totally, yeah. And so to me, that's how I, and it was kind of cool. His book kind of brought it all full circle of, hey, this is what Relentless is. This is how it is. Yeah. And so for me, I was fortunate enough, I think, to find that at a young age and not knowingly apply it to my life and right. use it throughout my life. Just started training yourself <clears throat> and patterning yourself to be that leader, to not let the things that come Correct. Up inevitably all the time bog you down. Well, and, and that's in, like, and like you had asked about kind of like the dynamic and working in the business, like 98% of the stuff that bothers my wife, it's like nothing to me. It's just like, oh yeah, whatever, right. you know? And whether it's like, you know, people leaving negative comments because you always have the haters out there and it's like, okay, whatever, you know? And her, she, she yeah. feels that, you know, because she creates the product, she created yeah. the company and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and so um, fortunate that's, you know, where I, you know, how I am and how I've been able to operate. Um, and so I think that's what's really served me well over the years. Yeah, which is a great kind of combination of, of two people that sure super passionate and not that you're not passionate but you're able right. to like help her 
sort of see the brighter side of things and, and see the you know the bigger term picture For and sure. everything like that. And yeah, it's funny. I mean, I wasn't married to Chris, but we had a lot of like very similar <laughs> dynamics. And when you, you you're when tight you like that, when you watch so time, close, yeah. I mean, we lived together for four years, <laughs> right. did like everything together, right? So we may as well have been freaking married. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> your married business partners, you know, it's like yeah, <laughs> totally. It's so a, to wrap it up, one final tip that you would give to somebody out there that's building an e-commerce brand, like sure, um, either on a personal level that's helped you add more to hours to your day, or just on like a cool business idea that or. Yeah. yeah, inspirational sort of final motivation <laughs> quote you could leave someone with. Um, so I think two things: one personal, one kind of business. Um, Perfect. So as entrepreneurs, you know whether uh, you know you get a lot more entrepreneurs starting businesses now. They have families and everything else. And I think one of the big things that has really made it easier, I guess you could say, and just work better overall is we've uh, when our kids were born. Um, so I have three uh, boys that are eight, and my daughter is ten. Um, that we've integrated them in everything we do instead of trying to figure out balance because they kind of think of it as a teeter-totter you're always either going to be a little more one way or another or if you're balanced you're really fighting hard and you're going to wear yourself out so we've integrated so everything we do whether it's um <clears throat> you know i've taken my sons to conferences my daughter to conferences things like that we've taken them on business trips and our nanny will go and they'll get to hang out and do stuff while my wife and i go to the conference and do yeah. that kind of thing and then we come back and spend time in the evenings together and we'll, we'll stack a day on the front and back end yeah to be able to go do stuff and so you're not always constantly dividing the worlds right it's just all tied together yeah. as one unit and, and operating and for us it's served us really well and has worked really well and all my kids have some type of entrepreneurial business my daughter runs paleo pets it's an all natural dog um, company that she makes stuff for dogs to clean their teeth very cool. natural flea nice. and tick powder and she shoots all of her own videos and she just launched her funnel last week for a free plus shipping offer and like she's integrated all this really cool stuff in her video ads yeah, and, really cool. you know I, I help set up all the ad parts and things like that for her but she shoots all their own video and I, yeah. well Mike shoots the video she's on the video but <laughs> oh, I don't want to take any credit away from Mike there <laughs> thanks Mike you're the best no problem I'm um, trying to steal Mike by the way for e-commerce rock stars so. <laughs> that's okay <laughs> he likes shooting so oh yeah um, and so it's worked really well from an integration standpoint um, my boys started are starting right now a um, the only true natural gum company, so no sugars and crap and everything. Yep. Because they love chewing gum, and they're all building click funnels, one funnel away challenge, and they have their own brand website. So you know the whole integration. We're not like, hey, you have to go do this. Right. They're just like from being around it. Like, how can we go do this? Right. Can you show me? Can you help me? So it's super cool. It's not like forcing them to play piano. It's like taking them to the concerts. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. That's right. Um, and then from a business standpoint. Um, I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, from e-commerce, I now, I mean, right now is such a great time to, st I mean, to start one. It's, it's so, it's easy with these, such the huge opportunities. You don't even have to own the products. Yeah. Um, and you know, just from a drop shipping standpoint, you can test literally, you don't even have to run newspaper ads like you had two years ago. You can run five dollars a day ads on Facebook or Instagram you don't need to or build YouTube. Custom software, custom software, or websites or whatever. No, um, but you can literally test for five dollars a day and know based yeah. on that response whether something's going to work or not. And so, um, you know, get out and try. Don't let that fear factor hold you back. You know, push through that. Don't let that be your limiting belief. And whether you started on the side, you know, you're working a nine to five now, whether you just started your e-com company, um, use, utilize and push through that fear factor to test, test, test. And then once you find your winner, just launch and go after it. Um, you know, and sometimes it may not be something you're super passionate about initially, but that's going to help propel you to that thing that you love and that you want to do so much about. So. I love it, man. Dude, thank you so much for being on the yeah, show. Yeah, for sure, dude. Uh, if you haven't heard Making Bank or if you haven't seen anything about Josh, like please follow it, listen to it. It's amazing. Where can people hear more? Obviously, yeah, definitely. On, on iTunes. Um, yeah, we're on. Um, so we've always been a video show, So, but uh, YouTube, any other. Um, if you just go to joshfelber.com, there's a link for Making Bank. It gives all of our guest episodes. You're on there sharing new amazing insights. Um, we've, I've had over 300 interviews. We're going into our fourth year. And um, check out PrimalifeOrganics.com, Paleo Pets. You can see my daughter's um, great website. I'm going to check that out. I'm so excited. So. That. That's awesome. <laughs> Josh, thanks so Appreciate much. Appreciate it, man. brother. I thank you and an honor to be on your show today. Cheers, man. Thanks, everyone, for joining us.